All right, people, welcome back. More card reviews. So today we are looking at the Divine Serpent. Uh, I didn't watch much of the original Yu-Gi-Oh, but I do remember a serpent with infinity attacks. So, mm -hmm. so it's finally going to be a real card. So let's see if uh, the real card gives justice to the anime. And, you know, I mean, this is supposed to be a god in itself. This is supposed to be, it's the Divine Serpent. The Divine Serpent, Ge? It looks like Ge. Or Gi? No, I think it's Ge. Like, mm. I mean, I, I don't know this Divine Serpent's uh, sexual preferences, but all right. So, uh, a Dark Reptile Effect, level 12. I mean, there's not too many level 12s in this game of Yu-Gi-Oh. They've been creating a lot more level 12s, but, you know, to be a level 12, you definitely, definitely have to, you know, hold your own, you know. There, there, so don't, don't mess this up. Question mark attack, all right. So, I'm guessing maybe the effect that allows him to get attacked, but zero booty, so no ass. Like, okay, so, for a Divine Serpent, if you, you know, if you get Book of Moon and ran over, then no, so. Uh, let's read its effect. Cannot be normal summon slash set, all right. Must be set summoned by its own effect. It cannot be special summoned by other ways. All right, how do you summon by its effect? If a monster, monster, so, uh, multiple, is destroyed by your opponent's attack or card effect, okay. So whether they run over one of your monsters or they hit you with a regeki, you can pay half your life points. Half. All right. Well, I mean, half is always subjective. You know, it could be 4,000, half of your 8,000, or it could be later in the duel where it's just like, I got only, you know, 400 life points. Like, half? That's only 200. So, all right. So is this worth half my life points? Let's find out. First, summon this card from your hand. All right. Cannot be targeted by effects. All right. Forget what I said about the Book of Moon. Can't be targeted. So that's actually decent. So if you summon this, at least you can't get, you know, uh, 101 or cast out or you know, dark rebellion. Well, there's dark rebellion because there's nothing to cut in half. So, uh, how is my phone going off? I apologize. Uh, it's uh, video the time that this is going up. The day this is going up is actually my birthday and uh, just a ton of calls and texts and all that. So, <laughs> I apologize for that professionalism. Doesn't matter if it's my birthday, we gotta keep this professional people. So, it cannot be targeted by card effects. So, it's not bad, you know. Uh, you never complain when your, your card can't be targeted by card effects. So, that's fine. But, uh, I don't see anywhere on here that he can't be destroyed by a card effect. So, of course, you can go ahead and hit your opponent with a Regeki. So, they paid half their life points summon this, and then you're just like, okay, Regeki? Like, that's the, that's the one. All right. But what's the attack game? We need to see this attack game. If this card attacks an opponent's monster during the damage step only, all right, that monster's effects are negated. Also, its attack becomes half its original attack. Okay, well... Unless this card's getting some attack, I don't see what's going to happen. So, you go ahead and half and negate their effect. Okay. Uh, is it on the field? Or or does it get its effect when it's in the graveyard? I might need some ruling on that. But I, I believe it's just going to be on the field. For example, if you attack a two, you know, if this card attacks into a Dark Destroyer, half Dark Destroyer's attack, its effects are negated, then kill it, and then it res resolves in the graveyard. So it goes off in the graveyard to do its all floaty shenanigans? I think. I think that's how it works. All right. But no. The next effect has to do with its att attacking. Uh, once per chain. All right. During damage calculation in either player's turn, if this card battles, you can make this card's attack become equal to the original attack of the monster on the field with the highest original attack your choice if tied. So that's where you get an attack. So pretty much... You attack into your opponent's monster. During damage calculations, you're going to go ahead and gain their attack. Then their attack is going to get halved, and their effect negated. So you pretty much run over anything. You know, you pretty much run it over because you're going to go ahead and gain the strongest, and then have what you're battling and negate effect. That's cool. But if they're attacking into you, you don't get that first effect to do the half and negating. Therefore, if something's coming after you. The only thing you're going to do is gain the attack of the strongest monster. Let's say they attack you with the strongest monster. Let's say I'm, I'm playing Cosmos, you're playing this, you summon game. All right, I summon Dark Destroyer, I attack into you. Dark Destroyer is the strongest monster on the field. You're going to go ahead and gain Dark Destroyer's attack. So we crash. you dead, and I'm going to float. So, and keep in mind, original attack. So straight up, I could... Uh, keep in mind, this is Divine Serpent, yeah, the, 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 the master with the infinity attack. I can literally summon a fucking Karibo, equip it with Axe of Despair, attack you. You only gain the original attack, so you only gain Karibo's attack. I'm boosted by Axe of Despair, you're dead. I just killed you with a freaking Karibo equipped in Axe of Despair. Like, alright, alright, you're a freaking god upon god that you summoned and paid half your life points. Like I said, if it attacks anything, it's got it, but if it's being attacked, it's probably going to crash with the strongest monster, or just lose if there's anything involving uh, outside of the original attack, higher than the original attack. It's kind of, uh, you know? 
So uh, I'm I'm not a big fan of this. You know, I don't think I'll be playing this. I'm not gonna pay half my life points for a monster that can just easily get crushed during my opponent's turn. You know, it's like, hey, hey, yeah, I know I paid half my life points to summon this level twelve ultimate god of a of a snake. What? What? You're just gonna summon a monster and then just crash with me? No. Well, okay. I guess I'm dead. <laughs> uh, what up? Whatever happened to that infinite attack that I had on the anime? <laughs> oh well. So no, I'm not. I'm not a big fan of this. This, this seems nah, nah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I mean, there you go. There, there's the divine serpent that we've been waiting for. There's your gah. So divine serpent gah is actually divine serpent meh. Oh, uh, okay. Because <laughs> that, I mean, if you can prevent your opponent from attacking, it, maybe. Maybe equip it with like a moon mirror shield, then it can't be targeted and then it'll always be stronger. And then whenever it attacks something, it will negate its effects and have its attack. So, but then if they come after you, then, you know, it's moon mirror shield, I guess, will kick in and make you a hundred points stronger instead of even so you don't crash and die. But, uh, I don't know. Is it worth it? And keep in mind, you can still be destroyed by card effects. So I can still just go ahead and hit you with a Gecky and you're dead. So, mmm, mmm. So, I'm not, I'm not a big fan of this. I'm not, not at all. Not at all. So. In the comment section below, go ahead and tell me what you guys think about Divine Serpent Gay in the comment section below. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this card review. Of course, I'll be back next week with some more cards to look at. So thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support. And uh, yeah, thanks for enjoying this episode of Card Review. See you guys next time.